tonight on an all-new marketplace. It won't be fixed today. The real deal on geeks and nerds. So there's some little bits on here that are missing. Insiders tweak our computers, and we put service techies to the test. Hi. Their mysterious ways. <laughs> and wild guesses. It's like two grand. What? How he came to that assessment escapes me. I really do not know. Find out who you can trust, what you can do, and what will happen to this guy. You're gonna fire him? Get what you need to know right now. We're turning technology on the tech. Here we go. Wiring this Toronto loft with hidden cameras. Can you count one to ten for me, please? The target: computer repair tech. Either this is defective, right. video card, or the motherboard. We're putting the people you trust to fix your computer to the test. It won't be fixed today. That's for sure. When something goes wrong with our computers, we're desperate, and a lot of us are angry too. The web is full of complaints about computer repair ripoffs. A pretty profitable home computer repair industry has sprouted up. We see computer nerds zipping around in cars. So are these geeks on wheels truly knights in shining armor? To find out, our bait computer and a damsel in distress, a marketplace producer. We call in ten home repair techs. But every tech has a different approach to figuring out our problem. Some of them think passing the computer parts around will help, or listening to it, or maybe speaking to the computer in its own language. Strangely, the techs can't seem to agree on what's gone wrong. Motherboard is dead. If something happened to the video, is that or the motherboard? The thing is, we know what's wrong with this desktop. We brought it to a team of computer wizards: Steve Gazzo, Tanya Gonzalez, and Chris Shaw. They teach computer know-how at Humber College. Fix the school's computers when they crash. We ask the team to give our computer a small, common problem that's easily fixed. We're going to exchange、uh, the RAM module with one that has been、um, blown. So there's some little bits on here that are missing. Right. Right now, the only thing that is wrong with this system is that one RAM module that we installed. A simple problem: a broken RAM part should cost about 25 bucks to replace. But at the loft, we sure are getting a lot of grim news. First up, we call in Grade A student. Hello. They promise guaranteed solutions, but can he figure out what the problem is? Okay, so we have a dead motherboard. A what? Motherboard is dead. This is the motherboard. Okay, this sounds serious. It is. You have to replace this entire thing here. But Grade A's diagnosis is wrong. He charges us eighty bucks for his time and tells us to go buy a motherboard that we don't need. With our cameras recording, the tech from Nerds on Site shows up. This company has almost a thousand nerds on call in nine countries. They claim they know stuff. Did you hear the the hard drive making different sort of sounds? What do you mean, like the before it blew? No, I mean it was fine, and then I got this. Yeah. So you think it's a hard drive? Yeah, probably. Hard drive is bad, right? It's very bad because、uh, you have all your data. Very bad too, because we、um, know the hard drive's okay. The suggestion would be to buy another hard drive. He charges us a hundred and fourteen dollars for his time, and later emails us a quote for a new hard drive, a hundred and forty bucks. Money we shouldn't shell out, says Humber's Steve Gazzo. Completely ludicrous. You can't make any kind of diagnosis that quickly. Our next house guest to roll up, Geek Squad. They're the biggest players in the world of computer repair. Work out of Best Buy stores throughout North America. But watch what happens when one of their geek mobiles pays a visit to our loft. My professional advice is the motherboard,、uh, meaning you have to have it taken in and you have to replace the motherboard. 
Remember, the problem's a broken RAM part. So far, we've heard it was the motherboard, the CPU, and the hard drive. All wrong. Out of 10 techs we call in, only these three can figure out what the problem is. We track down three techs who used to work for big name retailers. Rob, Malcolm, and Sean confess that taking advantage of most of us is easy. When people would come in with a crashed computer, how much did they actually know about what was wrong with it? Very little. Um, the majority of people don't understand the basic components inside of a computer. They'll bring it in, it's like, it doesn't turn on anymore, or like, I can't log into Windows anymore, or it's getting this error message. They don't know what's causing it. You get a lot of blank expressions. They'd bring the computer and they'd have kind of no idea what it is. Um, I even had one lady actually bring the monitor because she thought that was the computer. Back with the computer at our loft, we keep getting bad news. Well, the processor is broken. We have nothing because this computer doesn't even turn on. So many varied verdicts. We wonder how trained these people are. The insiders we speak to say tech training is inconsistent at best. It was pretty much, here's a computer, fix it, we got to get going. That was it. That Welcome was my to training. Best Buy. Welcome to Best Buy. You're learning on your feet today. Did anyone ever ask, what systems have you been trained on? What are you able to do? Were you ever given a test to make sure you were qualified? Not really. In the interview, we were asked a couple of questions, you know, like what job experience you've had doing it as a technician and... That was pretty much it. They uh, read a book and they get hired. So uh, I guess the screening process for being, for like hiring a technician is not as good as what it should be. But when we bring in our computers, we think we're getting an expert. You guys are the computer nerds. You know what you're doing. That's a lot of the impression that's given to you based on the uniform. Since these insiders all worked at big box stores, where lots of us take our computers in crisis, we decide to test them too. We head to three big chains, Staples, Best Buy, and MDG, and two smaller Toronto stores, Infonec and the Techno Space. And this time, we drop off a laptop with a small problem created by Chris Shaw at Humber. So what should they do to fix this problem? What they should do is just run um, a reinstall of Windows, and this will reinstall all the system files. You're done. You get the laptop back. For this second test, again, a clear problem, a corrupt system file. That shouldn't cost more than 60 bucks to fix. But as we shop our bait laptop around, a strange thing happens. What I can do is try to run a diagnostic test on it, find out if your wireless card is defective. Before you know it, this tech from Geek Squad tells us we might need a new wireless card and might have to spend more reformatting the hard drive. We were encouraged to recommend upgrades they need, like different, like more RAM, hard drives, new antivirus software, etc. There were always sales targets. Give the customer what they, what, what you can get them, you know. The old lady came in and she put her tower down in front of me and it wasn't turning on. Went and looked inside, it was just a loose connector that had fallen out on the system board where everything plugs in. So I plugged it in and, the man, and I'm like, here you go, have a nice day. The manager goes, aren't you going to charge her? I'm like, no, it took five seconds. And she left and then I got yelled at for a good half hour about why I should have sold charged her the, was it, 49 or $50 diagnostic fee? For something that took you five seconds to do? Yeah. And why did he think you should charge that much? Because tech work all goes to the bottom line of the store. It's pretty much, in their opinion, free money. We're back to pick up that laptop. At Best Buy, a Geek Squad tech detects a viral infection. But as we know, there's no virus. So what's wrong with it? There are all a bunch of viruses, there's spiders, they removed it all, but it has a corrupted Windows system. At MDG, a national electronics chain, they say they find that phantom virus too. Did you figure out what was wrong with it? There was a Trojan virus. A Trojan what? Yeah. What's uh, Trojan is like uh, the oldest virus around. It just starts corrupting the whole software. Yep, two out of the five stores say they find a virus. Remember, we gave the laptop a problem that's easy to fix. But Chris Shaw warns we might have to shell out for something worse than an imaginary virus. What's the worst thing that could happen when we bring this laptop in? Charge you for backing up your data, replacing your system. Ka-ching, ka-ching. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and that should not happen. No. Okay. No. But it does happen. 
over and over. And boosted prices are popping up again. Back at our loft, here comes a tech with Computer Doctors, a big company in the Toronto area that claims to offer exceptional service. Usually the chips, individual chips, are 40 bucks, but I'm just going to charge you 35 Oh, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. Seems like he's giving us a deal, but Steve tells us he's not. In actuality, you can, you can find the same amount of RAM for half that. And this tech charges an extra 25% because we asked for service the next day. Not that he ever told us it would cost more. It's like a new Wild West. No standard prices. Some companies just seem to charge what they think you'll pay. I'd like to see it become actually more of an official profession where we can be reprimanded, we can, have, we can lose licenses. Now we've got a tech from Computer Doctor making a house call. He gets it right and fixes the problem, but he tells us to pay him cash under the table for the RAM part so his company doesn't know. I just don't write them under the invoice. Of course, with no written record, there's no guarantee if the parts we buy stop working. For sure. Who doesn't want to make money more money? You tell me. Another tech who also detects the problem correctly also gives us inflated prices. Check out the markup when Dr. Dave pays a visit. This is 120. 120? Yeah. <whistles> this is only 256. Right. This is 1,000. It's four times that size. You don't have anything smaller with you? No, no, no. This side is not that easy to find. Sure seems pricey. We asked Steve for the real cost of that part. From this website here, we get it quoted at, at $64.99. And um, we got it from Dr. Dave at a, at a price of $120. So basically doubled. But jacking up prices isn't the worst of it. We know our computer just needs an easy fix. But some of the tech suggest we buy a new computer. Listen to this guy from Grade A Student. The basic is $599. It comes with everything. It comes with Windows. Remember, his company promises guaranteed solutions. But this isn't quite the solution we'd hoped for. Brand spanking new. This techie from Geek Squad doesn't spend much time trying to solve our computer conundrum. Nine minutes. Then spends 20 minutes showing us new computers his company happens to sell. My professional advice would be buy a new computer and have data transfer from those drives to a new one. I got the feeling that he was, um, in that sense, he was more of a salesperson than a technician. Remember, it's just a $25 part, but four out of ten companies suggest buying a new computer. But this isn't just about money. Your privacy's at stake. Repair techs have access to your private data. Photos, emails, passwords. There's always a possibility of a technician seeing it. Now, some technicians might go snooping for it, like actually seeking out to find it. Some people just might stumble across it. It all depends on the person, really. In fact, in the U.S., a Geek Squad tech who worked at Best Buy has been fired for copying customers' private info. So we set up another test, load our laptop with files with intriguing file names. And at one of our five stores... Yeah, it says this one was accessed Monday at 6 o'clock. This one. Wow, sexy. Uh, this one was also accessed Monday at about quarter to six. Nice pose. <laughs> it looks like just two files uh, may have been um, accessed according to the timestamps. That's just like, that's leaving the cookie jar open for like a little kid to go in to see it. Like, they're going to be curious what it is. So and then they'll probably have like a laugh about it or something like that, so... For me, those stand out being, like, I've seen viruses that actually do stuff like that, and I'd be like, well, we'll see what these are. Like, these might just be images, these might actually be an issue here. So you would have opened them in the name of work? Exactly, yes. Out of five stores, one seems to have opened our files. The others removed the data from our hard drive, then reinstalled it, so we don't know where techies may have looked. We just threw a couple of interesting files up, but lots of us store banking information, tax returns. Stores have policies. They're supposed to erase any record of our info, but our insiders say there's no guarantee. The managers or the supervisors or whoever's there can't be looking at these people 24-7. You know what I mean? And half of the uh, technician rooms don't have cameras in them. So it's a back room 
people can slip a disc in their pants or whatever. So technicians might actually go through our personal information and make their own copies? I knew a guy who would keep a collection of everyone's um, porn that he found on their computers. I don't think he ever looked at it. He just kept it for fun to see how much he'd have. Uh-huh. A technician who would take this off customers' computers. Yeah. Whether it was price, sales tactics, diagnosis, or service, not one of our 10 home repair techs gets a perfect score. Only 30% figure out the problem. Our Humber team can't believe it. I thought that the percentages would be higher. 30% is pretty low. That's very discouraging. I was, I was thinking probably 60%. <laughs> I expected it to go almost the opposite the way it, of it did. I figured the hardware problem would be easier to diagnose than it actually was. The three companies who get it right, Computer Doctor, Computer Doctors, and Dr. Dave. They were all in and out in less than half an hour. But their prices for parts were a lot higher than what you can buy online. A couple companies, including 24-Hour Geeks, couldn't figure it out, but didn't charge us either. It's good that they didn't charge you since they didn't do anything. The biggest bill for a home visit that didn't fix the problem, Best Buy's Geek Squad, 137 bucks. And how did the retail stores fare? Well, things started off well. At this small Toronto store, Infonec, this tech diagnoses our problem in minutes. Something's gone wrong with the Windows installation. Either some of the files have gotten corrupted or... And to fix, it's so easy, we can do it ourselves. Yeah, usually it's pretty easy. Like I said, you just stick the disk in, turn the system on. Okay. It'll start up, but it's pretty simple. Okay. And the best news, no charge. Staples got the diagnosis right and wanted $57 to fix the problem. Best Buy's Geek Squad took eight working days to fix the problem and charged 113 bucks. And the store that charged the most to fix our small problem? MDG. We had to shell out $285. Sounds like you got ripped off. Well, you did get ripped off. Hi. How are you doing? Good. But in all our testing, in stores and back at our loft, one techie performed poorly in every way. Service, diagnosis, price, and privacy. His company? Nerds on site, yep. Uh, I'm not sure where to start with these guys. Um, basically, they had it wrong from the beginning. Remember him? He shows up an hour late and seems to think our hard drive could be shot. Did you hear the, the hard drive making different so sounds? What do you mean? Like the... Before I blew? No, I mean, it was fine, and then I got this. Yeah. So you think it's a hard drive? Yeah, probably. Next, our Nerds on Site tech tells us our computer may have to go to The Room, a special dust-free room in London, Ontario. Probably take about two weeks, three, three weeks, sometimes a month, to get all that information back. It's unheard of for a personal computer uh, to be sent to this kind of, to this kind of uh, retrieval room. And The Room costs a bundle. So Once it gets to the, to the room, it's like two grand. What? Yeah. $2,000? So the first thing you would have to do is put a price on your data. A lot of money. But if you're desperate enough to get your computer working... It's at that point where um, they think, you know, they'd pay almost any amount to get that data back. So it, it really puts the consumer in a, in a vulnerable position, I think. Next, without asking, the techie downloads all of our computer's data onto his own laptop. Is that all my stuff? Morocco. I yeah. Some pictures from Morocco. Okay. That's good? That's good. My pictures from Morocco, yep. Yeah. I'll do this. Copy. I'll just paste them on my desktop. He took all of your information without consent, um, which is unthinkable in this kind of business. So, with an incorrect diagnosis, a warning the problem could cost $2,000 to fix, and our privacy on the line, we've got some questions for the company that sent this guy over. So, we head to London, Ontario, 
corporate headquarters for Nerds on Site. Hi, Dave. Yes, I am. Erica Johnson, nice Erica, to meet you. Erica, nice to meet you. Dave Redekop's one of the company founders. How do we know when we hire a nerd from Nerds on Site, we're getting someone who's qualified, who knows what they're doing? That's a very good question. In fact, a very large percentage of our customer base comes from referrals. We want Redicop's take on how one of his nerds performed. I'm going to show you how Nerds on Site did. Okay. He doesn't know that he's being taped, but he does know that there's a problem with this computer. So you think it's a hard drive? Yeah, probably. Hard drive is bad, right? It's very bad because uh, I have all your data on it. What do you think about that? Well, it's certainly difficult at this point to assess it. Keep in mind that terminology that we use and the customers use is very often all-encompassing. Next, we show the nerd talking about that room that could cost... $2,000? Is that a normal course of procedure? No, it definitely is not a normal procedure. Why do you think he mentioned this room? It's hard for me to assess. How he came to that assessment escapes me. I really do not know. Redicop also doesn't know why this nerd is downloading all of our private info onto his laptop. This techie has just started to download our hard drive without asking. Is that correct policy? No, absolutely not. So if you have privacy policies, he doesn't appear to be following them? Clearly not. What do you think when you see that? Well, I'm angry, quite frankly. I'm angry that this would happen with our team. And there's more. Now the nerds on site tech detects more problems. So we're looking at the, the motherboard and the CPU. We know the motherboard and the CPU are in perfect working condition. There's no problem with them. Yet he says there's a problem. We take this very seriously. It's breaking my heart. Honestly, yes. At the end of all of this, gave us a bill for $114 didn't fix the problem, told us that we needed to go out and buy expensive parts that we didn't need. What do you say to that? My decision's made. He's no longer a nerd, effective right now. You're going to fire him? We make absolutely no excuse for terminating contracts when people behave inappropriately. But wait, this nerd isn't done. As he gets ready to leave, he's still got our private data on his laptop. Uh, okay. Delete everything. Okay. I don't keep it. You don't keep it? Look to my Morocco pictures? <laughs> oh, I might go through the pictures. Whether he was joking or not, we show Dave Redekop. Here we have a technician saying, I might go through your personal data. Is that acceptable? Absolutely not. So this guy's gone, but most of us don't know much about our computers. We just want them to work. So how would we know if we're being taken advantage of or given bad advice by a nerd? I know this is one bad apple because of, statistically, how many new clients we get as word of mouth. We wouldn't get a word of mouth a customer, a word of mouth referral if this is the kind of experience that you receive. What do you think about that, I mean, that picture of your industry? We're very sorry for the picture of industry. It's a wake-up call for all of us. After our interview, we get a refund, our data back, and the company makes a change adds a checklist to its invoice, so customers have to agree to letting a tech copy and remove private data. But that tech nerds on site promised to fire? The company tells us previous customers gave him a high approval rating, so they say he's still with the team, but not making house calls. And techs are busier than ever, in a world where you have to hope you get someone who knows what they're doing. I have uh, another two calls like yours. The computer is starting off to work properly. As it is right now, if it keeps going on this way, we're going to be at probably the same level as car salesmen uh, when people talk about us. So I don't know if I'm going to be bringing a bad news to everybody today or hope oh, not. Now, here's what our insiders say you can do. Next time on Marketplace. Oh, there's one. Perfect. Wendy Mesley uncovers a turf war. Perfect. 
outlawed chemicals. We sell literally tons of this stuff. Defiant gardeners. He's even telling me that people are going out and spraying after dark. It's the green lawn versus the green law. You can use whatever you want. Buzz don't mean anything. So as an environment minister, that's that that's but you disappointing. Could, you either support the idea of the ban or you don't. And in the weeks ahead, it says product of Canada. Is it from Canadian milk? Maybe not. Could I find out if the garlic is actually grown in Canada? The information is not available. Product of Canada? What's really in our shopping cart? We've been trying to find out for a couple of months now. Well, you're talking to me now and I can find out for you and I will find out for you. Battery collection day! Bring out those dead batteries you've been wondering what to do with! Watch one small town take on That's one fun. big Way challenge. Go, you guys. And see why battery recycling is a powerless program. Recycling rates are very low. At best, they might be 10% for rechargeable batteries. I think it's a great, great start for us in After terms of... After 10 years? It's not the drive through it's a sit-down restaurant meal. A healthier choice? How many calories are in a meal? I couldn't really tell you. If, even if I get an egg with muffin for breakfast in the morning, I know how many calories are in it. We'll tell you what family food chains don't want you to know. Pad Thai. Oh, pad Thai? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pad Thai's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh! oh my God. Get what you need to know every Wednesday night on Marketplace.